Well, hello everyone and thank you for joining us. We would normally have been meeting in Alveston Parish Church this Sunday, the 10th of January uh, at 9 o'clock and in our daughter church, St John's, in the afternoon at 3. But in the light of the recent guidance we've had from the government and the Church of England, we've decided to close our two church buildings, uh, except for funerals, for the duration of this current lockdown. That, that will be at least until the February half term. But at the same time, we're determined that the life and the worship and the witness of our churches should continue strongly as they have done in previous lockdowns. So although that's the situation at the moment, we will be encouraging everyone to join us in worship on Zoom uh, on Sunday mornings at 10.30, uh, 10 o'clock for Junior Church, and we also want to offer help and support to anyone who'd like to join us but hasn't managed to do that so far. At the same time, we'll be putting a pre-recorded sermon, as we're doing at the moment, on the UPC Facebook page and the church website and on YouTube every week uh, with an appropriate introduction. And also we'll ensure that those who aren't online, and we realise that many people are not, uh, they'll continue to be contacted through our fortnightly mailings and regular phone calls. So if you're not getting those and you'd like them, please contact the, me through the church office or Jen, our administrator. This week we remember the, the baptism of Jesus Christ and the set reading for today, for this week, is Mark chapter 1. And I'm going to read verses 9 to 15. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness for forty days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, and angels attended him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's no use pretending that life is a bed of roses all the time, or a bath of daisies, as one of our daughters put it one day. It is good to count our blessings, but when things go badly, it's not honest and not really healthy to deny that or to suppress our thoughts and feelings. But do we have a faith that can cope with the low points of life as well as the highs? I'm sure most of us will know someone who stopped coming to church and maybe even stopped trusting in God because the low points of life have somehow overwhelmed them. So I wonder, how does your faith cope with adversity? And how can we use the tough times to draw us closer to God rather than pushing us away from him? And I think that's a really important question because if we've got no language of lament... How can we speak to God about injustice in the world? And in fact, complaining against God, as the psalmist did so often, is a sign that we believe that he is a God of justice. And in today's Gospel reading, short as it is, we move from the baptism of Christ, which is a wonderful high point, to his temptation in the wilderness, which is definitely a low point. So what is the here, which is good news for the sick and their carers, for the hungry, for the lonely, uh, for the Syrian refugee, for anyone who's going through a testing time right now. Well, firstly, it's worth spelling this out, that we are in a battle. Immediately after Jesus is baptised, anointed by the Holy Spirit and declared by God the Father to be his beloved Son, the Holy Spirit sends him out into the wilderness to do battle with Satan. 
And actually this shouldn't be a surprise because throughout the Bible and through all of history, there is a battle between two kingdoms. There's the kingdom of God, where there is righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And there's the kingdom of Satan, where there is injustice, sadness, sickness and death. Satan is described as the prince of this world. And he actually has power over us because we're all heirs of Adam and Eve who obeyed Satan rather than God. So actually the world currently is under enemy occupation. And Jesus came to overthrow Satan's kingdom. And his preaching of the good news of God, as well as his healing of the sick and driving out evil spirits, they're all part of his overthrowing of the kingdom of Satan. Jesus came to announce that the kingdom of God is near and when he returns, as he will at the end of time, he will bring in God's kingdom completely. And we know that God on the cross through Jesus decisively defeated Satan, but even so God's kingdom is not fully here. We live between Jesus' first coming and his second coming, which is why there is still injustice and war in sickness and sickness and death. His kingdom is not yet fully established. But although we're in a spiritual battle, the outcome of that battle isn't in doubt. It's not actually a battle between equal forces, because God is almighty, uh, all-knowing, he's eternal, uh, he's uncreated, whereas Satan is a created being. Satan is a fallen angel. Uh, his power is therefore limited. And uh, as it says in Revelation chapter 12, he's filled with fury because he knows his time is short. So actually we should never be dismayed when we see or we face up to sickness and death or when we see injustice, inequality, cruelty in the world around us because we know that's temporary, Satan's time is short. And a time will come when sin and death will be no more. And whenever we give to the poor, fight for justice, care for the sick, we're actually saying, in effect, that we serve another king whose kingdom will one day be established here on earth as well as in heaven. So there's a battle. And also we're tested in this battle. When Jesus is sent into the desert, he's there for 40 days being tempted by Satan. And that word tempted can mean being tried or tested, much as the people of Israel were tested for 40 years in the wilderness before they were ready to enter the promised land. For Jesus, these 40 days were essential preparation for three years of public ministry. They were actually a time of strengthening so he could face even tougher trials in the future as he turned his face towards the cross. And actually, if we want to be a Christian, we have to take up our cross and follow him. If everyone who came to Jesus got exactly what they wanted, and their life really did become a bed of roses, we would have some very soft Christians. And we actually might become a Christian for the wrong reasons, to have an easy life. And actually, there's a couple of place in the Bible, more, more than two, but two I can pick on, where we see how God sometimes allows us to suffer in order to correct us. So in Psalm 119, verse 67, before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I obey your word. And the Apostle James says in his letter, consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. And I wonder how often God allows us to go through sickness and troubles of different kinds so that we can grow. And I think that's the point here. So often we misunderstand God's loving purposes and we end up becoming bitter towards God for allowing us to go through things that are painful and testing, even though it's for our good. When Jesus was sent by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted, it didn't for a moment mean that he'd ceased to be the beloved son of God. It was for his good and our ultimate good that Jesus was tested and strengthened for the battle ahead. 
And if we feel bad about not being able to meet in person in our church buildings right now, let's spare a thought for Shuang Church in Beijing, which has been forced to worship outdoors in all weathers since it was evicted by the authorities from its building in 2011. But the very fact it's continued to meet right up to the present day and to remain strong has inspired other churches which are going through persecution themselves. So if you're going through a testing time right now, don't think that means that God doesn't love you. Hold on to the fact that God knows you by name, he loves you and he has a mission and a purpose for you and for his church, whatever it is that comes against us. So there's a battle going on. God equips us in that battle. And when we submit to God, we begin to win that battle. We find out more about Jesus' time in the wilderness in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. And here Mark simply tells us he was there for 40 days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals and angels attended him. But we can see that as he fasted and prayed, with the help of those angels who were ministering to him, he was able to overcome Satan's temptations. Because when those 40 days are over, he goes into Galilee saying the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. There are many good reasons to fast from food and from other things for that matter. Uh, when we do without something, it makes us more compassionate to the poor and the hungry who are doing without themselves. It prepares us to meet a major challenge. If you read the books of Esther and Nehemiah in the Bible, you find that that happened to them. It actually benefits others if we give away the money that we've saved. It creates more time for reading and prayer and being creative as well. It brings greater intimacy with God helps us to appreciate simple pleasures more. But actually, most importantly, we fast because Jesus himself did it. And as we submit to God and place our trust in him, he gives us the wisdom and strength we need to overcome the challenges that face us. I wonder how often angels have ministered to you when you were weak and cast down, had no idea what to do next. Can you think of a moment when you were almost overwhelmed and God gave you just what you needed? A moment when you were weak and he gave you the strength that you needed. And actually the reality and depth of our faith in God is revealed by the way we react to the times when life is a struggle and God actually seems far away. If we just look to God for what we need and what we want, we'll never get close to him. But if we seek him and seek to do his will, whatever the cost, then we draw closer to him. C.S. Lewis gives us a helpful picture of this in The Four Loves. He says this, imagine that you're on a mountain, walking to a village which is your home, and at midday you come to the top of a cliff where you can look down and see the village a mile below. But even if you were an expert climber, you couldn't get down you have to go the long way around, five miles maybe, to get there. And at many points, you'll feel further away from the village than you were on the clifftop. And in one way, that's true, but all the time, you're drawing nearer to home. We don't have to be one more casualty in the spiritual battle, one more person who's given up on God or the church. When we are at our lowest, God is still there with us. His angels are attending us. And if we belong to Christ, we will share in his victory over the powers of sin and death. So I hope that that helps as you carry those thoughts into the coming week, that whatever comes your way, God is with you and that he will equip you and strengthen you to face those things. I'm going to end with a, a blessing. It's actually a blessing for this season. We're in the season of Epiphany, uh, where Jesus revealed himself in all his glory to the wise men and to the world. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you 
the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you now and remain with you always. Amen. So I do invite you to keep in touch, uh, maybe through our Facebook page or our church website. Uh, and if you'd like to join us for Zoom worship on Sundays, if you contact the church office, then they can give you the link for that. Thank you for joining us and I hope you have a really good week.